Hello everyone, my name is Stefan Anilo Busungu. And my name is Sankala San Swatama, and we are from SMA Negeri 2 Depok. And today we're here to, ex to explain to you about a science project we've come up with called Serena, aka the self regulating wave energy absorber. You know what? Let's just get right into it. All right. Okay, so as we all know, electricity has pretty much become an essential part of our lives. How so? Think about it. From the smallest things like charging up your phones, you need electricity. Up to large scale purposes like powering up houses or powering up generators, you need, again, electricity. But the thing is, electricity just doesn't simply come out of nowhere and start charging up your phone out of nowhere like it's a, some sort of a miracle from God. No, it doesn't work like that. It comes from power plants. But power plants, just like its name, it needs to be powered up by something. And unfortunately, most power, most power plants that exist today are powered up by fossil fuels. Now, um, you're probably wondering, what's so bad about fossil fuels? Okay, yes, fossil fuels, they do produce uh, a large amount of energy, and they're very cost-friendly. But the thing is, they harm not just the environment, but also the, to, but they also harm the living species that lives in it. For one example, um, there was this research, right, done by the Hudson River Clearwater Group. And they stated that lakes, rivers, from New York across New Jersey have pretty much become inhabitable. So basically, if you put a fish in a random lake in Central Park, they'll just pretty much die a slow and sufferable death. And that is caused by acid rain that keeps on occurring regularly. So if that keeps on happening, hum uh, humanity is pretty much doomed. Yeah. That's why they come up with a plan well, called Renewable Energy Sources. See, renewable energy sources are meant to be a suitable alternative to the current non-sustainable power plants. New, uh, renewable energy sources include solar, mm -hmm. wind, and water. This type of en uh, energy sources are meant to replace the current one, which is very, very harmful to the local environment, right? Then we're saved. Well, not quite. Unfortunately, these type of power plants comes up with their own pair of setbacks. Okay. The wind turbines require a very specific area where there is a high wind activity so that it can produce the maximum amount of electricity. And it is also very dangerous to aerial animals. And next, there are the solar panels, which is also very dependent on sunlight and also clear weather. So the maximum electricity output is not that significant compared to the other renewable energy sources. And there is also the nuclear energy, which is relatively new and high tech. but the Hudson Group that Stephen has mentioned before released that it could actually release, release some low-level radiation regularly, so it yeah. could also harm the environment mm -hmm. and the living creatures that are re nearby. And it leaves us with one last option, which is water-based power plants. Now you're probably um, unfamiliar, unfamiliar with the concept of water-based power plants, the, because you know, water-based power plants, they don't really produce that much energy compared to its other competitors. And that's where we came to play. We've decided to make Serena. Yes. Now, Serena is special. Unlike its other competitors, which utilizes only one movement to harness energy from water, either horizontally or vertically, Serena can do both. Of them. And it also has this special feature, which will be explained by my friend. Okay. Yes, all right. That is very correct, Stephen. Serena utilizes two movements, which is horizontal and vertical, in the same device so that it can produce basically double the amount of energy. Correct the window. Yeah. Serena is very dependent on its buoy that harvests the horizontal and vertical movement mm -hmm. to move the cart that holds the generators that will produce electricity. Serena also has the unique function to adjust its position using the electronic sensor to detect the movements of the tides. See, if the tides changes at night or during the day, Serena will be able to know that and Serena will 
uh, adjust its position to get a better, let's say, a uh, place so placement. that it can yeah a placement so it could better uh, absorb the movement of the waves. Yeah. So enough about theories. Let's talk a more about the application of Serena in the future. Okay. Right. Um, after we've done you know a couple of research, we have come to the conclusion that it is best to put Serena on the coastal lines of Javanese islands mm. compared to any other islands in Indonesia. Why is that? Because it turns out um, the amount of energy that we can harness from these waves, it is the most amount of waves that we can harness is on the coastal lines of Javanese islands. Uh. To be specific, on the coast of Bandung. Mm. So the most waves, the most optimal amount of energy that will yes. be released as well. Yes. All right. And I guess that's all there is to it, right? Yeah. So to conclude our presentation, um, Serena has a very big potential uh, to replace its competitors later on in the future. Because based on requirements alone, it is way better than its competitors. And not to mention the energy output. Even though we do realize that we need to do an even more thorough and deep research for it, um, which we'll definitely do. I guess you could do the closing. Yeah, all right. With a lot of ambitious goals that we need to proceed with in the future, we are hoping that Serena will be help will be able to be uh, helping humanity to yes, trans uh, trans to transition. Yes, in a more sustainable way of life in the future. Uh, and I think that is all for us tonight. Thank you so much for having the time to listen to our presentation. Thank you. And goodbye.